Hello and welcome to this Blender Low Poly tutorial. This is actually part of a longer series, so if you haven't watched the previous episodes, you may want to have a look at those first. Let's continue where we left off. In this video, I'll be rigging this guy. To do this, a few things I want to make sure before I get started is that because I've done this mistake a few times and I don't want you to make it, uh, make sure everything is in scale one here. So you don't have any objects that are scaled. If you have something that's uh, incorrectly scaled here, press control A and then apply. You can actually do everything rotation and scale here um, because you want everything to be in the correct scale because Unity will make a living nightmare out of your day if stuff is not scaled properly. And you also want the origin of the character to be at the base of his feet in the very center. So that should be the pivot point and the origin of the character. So let's start to move. Uh, I'll uh, start by hiding some of his uh, weapons. It's only the axe that's showing and we can also hide the helmet. And then what we want to do is we want to press shift C to get the because we want the armature center to be down here as well. And then do shift A to add armature, single bone. And then enable X-ray so you can see the bones here. And then move up. You don't want to move the bone up actually, the origin. So uh, press control Z there uh, because the center of the armature should be down by center feet as well. It's easier to animate the character and have him in unity running on the ground that way. So go tab into edit mode, select this one and move it up. And then I'm going to put his, uh, this is going to be the pelvis bone. So we can name this one straight away into pelvis, not this one. We're going into the bone editing and then so pelvis here. And then I can press Z to ensure that it's actually, because I've got some clothing here, so it's difficult to see but let's move the bone to there yeah that's the pelvis now z to go back into out of wireframe mode we can actually move this one down a little bit more press on the axis here when you move uh, rather than the uh, that makes it perfectly aligned when you move it press e to extrude and then I'd, i usually press escape and then i go up with the uh, axis gim uh, gizmo instead to make it sure that it's perfectly straight and then we need this one to be called spine one and then B to extrude escape move it up to here and then this one spine two E to extrude escape move them up to there that's gonna be the neck E to extrude escape move it up on the axis all the way to the there and call this one head and then compress three on the numpad uh, to get the side view. Let's hide that. So tab again. And now I need to move uh, edit. So I click on the armature again. I just have to hide that, hide that shield. Uh, press tab into edit. And then I make sure again to move along the axis here. Rather than uh, if you just start moving uh, using G in a slightly angled view, you'll start misaligning the skeleton. And let's do use these to move into the position here. So that's going to be the pelvis, spine one, spine two, neck and head bone. And then it's time to do the arms. So let's do from here. You can do E to extrude. And this time I'll just move it out like this. You select the bone with the right mouse button and then do Alt P and do clear parent, select this one and oop, the wrong one, let's move this bone to here. This is going to be the collarbone and uh, I always use collarbones nowadays. I used to just model the arms, but it makes it a lot easier to animate if you have a collarbone to be able to twist the body a little bit more around the shoulders. So G and the collarbone can it doesn't have to be where a real collarbone is in the body and here e to extrude e to extrude to the hand e to extrude we're going to do the hand that's going to be the hand bone 
Here's finger one bone, finger two bone. And then we do top view, it's seven on the keypad. And we move this into position. important how this collarbone goes but let's keep it like that then okay and we still need to parent this one to this one again let's move the collarbone into there and then i select this bone here shift select spine two and then control p and make parent and keep offset and you get this little dotted line here and i'll show you why and if i wouldn't have done that if i do tab now to go in or Sorry, I do control tab to go into pose mode. When I rotate this now, you'll see that um, it rotates. If it wasn't connected, if I'm impaired, that the arm wouldn't be rotating with it. And it's important that it's connected to the spine two bone because you don't want it to rotate when you do the neck. Okay, and let's name these bones. So let's do tab to get out of there. And then let's call this one color bone dot L because this is his left arm it's to my right but it's his left arm and uh, I like to keep the name and conversion dot L um, and I'll tell you why in a minute I'll tell you why right now actually it's because when you flip this armature in symmetry mode it'll automatically rename them properly and put R there instead so this one is the upper arm dot L this is lower arm dot L this is hand dot L finger one dot L and finger two dot L. The reason why I do two fingers here is because when you close this into a fist, you don't want to have just one finger bone. It'll distort the mesh too much. So if you do two, that should be sufficient. And we also need to be able to close this thumb. And to do that, I go into top view with seven on the numpad, E to extrude the thumb bone and I think I'll do the same here I'll do E again so we have two thumb bones it just gives it a little bit more control the one on the numpad to get this one down Z helps sometimes to see if everything's in the center that looks good or good enough at least. So we should name these bones as well. Should be thumb dot L. Well, let's do thumb one dot L. Thumb two dot L. And then do control tab and let's make sure that the hand. So that's the arm. That's good. Or oh, the hand needs to rotate the thumb as well. So th this is uh, important because when you rotate the hand, you don't want the thumb to stay flat. That looks stupid. So we need to select this one again, do Alt P to clear parent, and then select this one and then shift select this one. I guess it's this one we need to select actually. Let's do it again. Uh, Control P keep offset and there's actually no need to keep that connected all the way to the bone there we can move this out it's just confusing to see that it's all the way there so did i do it right now let's see that's okay that's wrong so we need to oh, my bad let's clear this parent alt p Print. Let's do this again. And it is to the hand. Control P, keep offset. That's right. So now when I do in post mode, control tab, when you rotate the hand, the thumb should come along. Yes. But not when you rotate the fingers. That's good. So 
think that should be sufficient for the arms. Let's do the legs as well before we do the symmetry. And the legs we want to have to start here by the hip. So let's just click here on the hip and do shift. Let's see, am I in armature mode? I need to go out of post mode, so control tab again. And then I'll do shift A. Nope, I don't need to do that. Yeah, let's do that. I need to be in tab mode here, edit mode, shift A. There we go. And then G, let's move this one down to the knee. So this is the upper leg. E to extrude, escape, pull it down. E to escape, escape, and this is the foot. Three on the non-pad to go into side view. And let's move all of these bones into the leg here. Let's move the hip back, the knee forward a little bit foot back and this doesn't need to represent the way the foot looks I usually have it so that it goes down to the floor here and that it's towards the back of the foot here and this is why it's important when you model the character to have a slight bend to your knee it makes it easier as well as a slight bend to the elbow and um, because it makes it a lot easier later on when you uh, do uh, joint rotation and makes the blender understand a little bit better okay so we need to name these bones. This is the upper leg, L. No surprise, this one is lower leg, L, and foot, L. Okay, let's save this. Okay, and now we need to parent this one to the pelvis. So I select this one first, shift select the pelvis, and I do control P and keep offset. If I do control tab, this is interesting that the leg, oh yeah, yeah. okay, I had uh, two bones selected, that's why I was <laughs> rotating strangely. So if I have the pelvis selected, this is uh, just rotating like that, so that's good. Okay, now control tab to go out into and then tab again to go into edit mode here. We select all of these bones. I can do B and box select, B box select. And then now we do symmetry, armature, symmetrize, symmetrize. Sim well, make it sum symmetrical anyway. And now you'll see the magic here is that it's already flipped the names. So it's the R uh, for everything here, color bone. Okay, all good. Um, one more thing to do here as well, or two more things. One, make sure again that the scale of the whole armature is one. Make sure that it's one. Uh, if it isn't, it's after you animate, it's a nightmare to try to change that because it'll mess up all the animations. So make sure the armature is scaled to one. And next thing we need to do is uh, also I like to go into edit mode with tab select uh, everything and then I do control N and then align with axis like this um, because when you do a pose I'll show you um, it might not be 100% necessary that but uh, if any of the joints are not aligned um, facing forward when you try to flip a pose it could create problems later on so it's really good to have that done straight away if I go into pose mode here and I animate this arm, for example, like this, the arms are the best to test this on to make sure you've done it right, like this. And then let's move this one arm up. So if I select A twice now, control C. If I do control V now and everything flips perfectly symmetrical, control, oh, sorry, control shift V. To flip the pose control shift v and he exactly flipped the pose now so the left arm went up and the right arm went down um, that's why it's important to do the control n sometimes uh, to align the uh, the normals of the bones because uh, otherwise if you if either if you miss that or if the armature was uh, not correctly um, rotated for the joints 
then when you try to flip a pose, it'll flip one arm so it just faces backwards or something like that. So that's really, um, keep that in mind. And Alt G, Alt R restores the pose. That was just to show a test. Control save. And now we need to uh, link this. I think we're ready now to do this. So we select the armature control tab to go out of edit or pose mode. And then now we're gonna take this guy, the Saxon, shift click and select the armature and do control P. And we wanna do armature deform with automatic weights. And now it should already be hopefully quite good. Um, control tab, it should already deform fairly well. Uh, Blender does a decent job to detect and weigh the vertices. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel for future videos that I make. You can click to your right to watch the next episode in this series, or you can click on the left to watch the previous video.